Yes. Good. Thank you. Good. Welcome, welcome. Thanks welcome, a lot. Robert. We, um, if you like Gia, and um, if you'd like to introduce yourselves, uh, we have a few minutes until our guest joins us. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm, people call me Gia, but my name is Tony. Um, I'm Italian. I live in Britain. I am an environment, environmental graduate, but I'm also 67, a grandma, and that's my main title and my main mo motive. Great. We, we, we usually have more folks from, the, from England and um, still waiting for them. I may sound a little bit um, spaced out, but it's because I'm managing a, quite a few sc screens in here to get the technology going. And, I can uh, imagine. <laughs> so I'm so pushing. my partner, Madalena, has joined us now, Mother P. Hi, Mother. Great, great you join Hi. us. Nice to meet your sound, uh, your, your sound is a little bit, uh, a little bit squeaky. But uh, maybe if you have a heads, uh, headset, you can put it on. Other, but otherwise, uh, I, I still can hear. I, we still can hear you. Can you, um, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Good. Good. So Madalena's um, hailing from Naples, and I'm in Wales. I'm in Newport. Good, good. Hi, Robert, and hi, Tony. <laughs> hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I uh, this should go viral, in in my opinion. Everybody should be here on Saturdays or whatever, whatever, whatever other day of the of the week doesn't matter. It should go viral. I'm I'm really, really, or maybe not. Um, it's strange what's happening on 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 the tweeties online. Uh, I used to get quite a few um, likes, and um, I post in there with at least once or twice a week as soon as. The guest announces uh, is um, announces that he or she is uh, available for for the date, and uh, right now it's uh, it's crickets, nothing, crickets. I understand. Toads. Do you think it's because we're so close to Christmas? Uh, could be uh, it could be it could be something else that's happening in there. Their algorithms have changed. Well, did you say that you have people joining from England? Uh, from everywhere. We have uh, people for, from, from China. England, we have in mourning, Tony. We have from here Australia. in England. They're all probably in mourning because England has just lost to one to France, and they're out of the cup. Oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> So there's probably there are probably people crying and and throwing down glasses of beer, trying oh to forget my. their grief and and. Oh <coughs> my! <laughs> What's the future of the planet compared I, to that? I didn't, I, <laughs> I didn't realize the damage was so extent so extensive. Really, it's it's not really. just that it's two to one. It's two to one to France. <laughs> oh my! Historical arch enemy. Vive, vive la différence. <laughs> <laughs> vive la différence, qu'ils ont vaincu. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Diana. Uh, Crowley or uh, what's Crowley? Uh, Corey uh, hasn't shown up that. yet. So if you um, if you would if you would uh, please send him or. Uh, him or sure, him. will do. Yeah. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi, Diana. Hi. You sound English. <laughs> and we're still waiting for a few more folks. We still have. Um, we set up the time for for uh, Ed, Ed, uh, Eve to yeah. to um, start at two fifteen. 
because he's um, always busy. And uh, so I'm going to bring a, um, let's see if I have time to do that. I kind of, uh, <clears throat> no, I have, I do. Let's see. I'll give a, um, I'm punching buttons in here furiously. So bear with, bear <laughs> with us to get this thing going. I think you're a hero. I am a what? A hero. Oh my goodness. Bless, bless you. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have the courage to do what you're doing. So fantastic. Thank you. We, uh, yeah, I, 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 there's nothing else to do. We have, to, it's yeah. to get involved and, and, and I knock on doors and, um, I'm not ashamed of knocking on their doors. I think it's, Either either we either we move forward or there is no the, the it's not doom is is the forces of life will 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 um will be us. I stand good good. Hello, Stan. I'm Tony. I gear. I know it what says Geovox, but uh, Geovox is my um, nom de guerre for environmental campaigning. And Gia is here, and Roxy is it's here. It's pronounced Gia. Yeah, it's um, Welcome. it's the um, hi Rita. And uh, let's see what else. And Roxy, hi. And <clears throat> I'm preparing a few things in here in the background. And um, but you you welcome to to keep talking. It so it doesn't bother me. No worries. Um, I was just trying to trying to fathom this interface. It's like Zoom, but not like Zoom. Um, so I'm trying to get to grips with getting to see everybody. And I share one uh, one picture. Also welcoming the uh, indigenous peoples of of the world. This one is uh, Maori in uh, in New Zealand, and Aotearoa. I'm in uh, in Tongva land, unceded land, and uh, unceded uh, the Tongva nation, and um, mm -hmm. acknowledge them and the ancestors for their um, um, dedication to maintain the planet, water, air animals, food, plants, animals, rivers, oceans, mountains, in a, in a connection that uh, seems the rest of the world misses, or it's not frequented very often. It's um, maybe in special days or only, but this should be a, yeah. a daily occupation that we, uh, we depend on the planet, not the yes. other way around. The planet my doesn't, doesn't father, miss my... doesn't miss doesn't miss us. We uh, without the planet, air, water, food, plants, animals, uh, there is no us, and does not seem yet to have fallen into the awareness, into the consciousness of the human population. Population, the general human human population, eight billion. A few still keep that promise. That uh, that dedication, uh, the rest seems to be more in entertained with uh, cell phones and and um, games online and eighty eighty inch screen TVs and whatnot. And apparently, everybody really really suffering from the defeat in England against France. So, <laughs> <laughs> it yes, seems so, unavoidable. So. Um, I got also preparing here the pictures for I'm going to show the, the pictures for Eve is going to join us if he's on time in about usually is on um, in about five minutes I'm going to send him another notice that we are about to start
and uh, anyone that uh, unmute your microphone and uh, if you would like to introduce yourself himself or herself that's that's fine microphone on well my little box says my my name is you <laughs> it doesn't tell me what my name is but i'm stan I, Pockris. i have no idea how to control that um really i know in in um, in other platforms it's possible to do that on this one i have no idea how to change the name hmm. well some things are some things I mean, I was trying to establish a relationship with the Bank of America. I have an account with them, and I needed to tell them what my real address is. And they won't let me change it because my, according to them, my permanent real address is my old warehouse, which I haven't uh, been to, haven't been at for five years or more. It, and and it's just way silly. And... um I also needed to add a credit card to be able to pay them something, and yeah. I couldn't find an option to do that. So here I am complaining to you. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Please do doing? no problem. I I abandoned all, left all the major banks way way moons the, uh, yeah ago, oh. <clears throat> uh, and that's uh, I tried them all, including the, <laughs> the that one. Yes, and uh, well, that you, uh, in my opinion, you will have to go to the branch where you opened your account first. Didn't, didn't open an account on, on at a branch. On that only, branch, you need only on the internet. you need to visit, yeah. even if it is out of state or in the same state. You have to go to the town yeah. to the branch where you right. opened your account, and well, then and then guess, deal guess with what, it. Tony, I used to have a credit card with somebody else. And that somebody else sold their business to somebody else. And that person, that bank sold their business to somebody else, which became Bank of America. So they bought me. They didn't, I didn't buy them. They bought me. Oh. And I don't know how to get rid of them because they're very hard to communicate with. So oh, I, yeah. I oh, have my gosh. It's, it's... To, to, tell them, to tell them to cancel the account. And I haven't been able to find out how to do that. So. I I changed to uh, I changed to a, I, I, I closed all my accounts in those with those guys any of the big ones, and I changed to a wonderful I recommend it to anyone if you have connections with uh, teaching, it's the uh, Orange County Federal Credit Union. Yeah. And uh, boy, do they take care of my problems anytime anything even out of the country. It's mm -hmm. it's it's friendly. It's good. It's efficient. Way way. It's, it's there's no fees. I've never paid any fees, which I had to uh, pay mm -hmm. with with all of those all of those uh, characters, the big ones. And mm -hmm. uh, um, I recommend. And if not those, uh, any credit union, just investigate how do I, do I operate. They don't play <laughs> casino. They don't play casino as well, which is uh, in Wall Street. So um, that's another that's another plus. Yeah, well, we were with a credit union um, for a couple of years, and the volume of solicitation mail that came through our front door was so ridiculous that we left the. <laughs> Was, right. there, was like, there was no way to tell them stop stop sending us insurance and health and this and that and this and that and they wanted to buy our house and oh my god so we just left that and um, that we had to do by making an appointment and then going to their branch office on our appointment so i don't like them at all <laughs> this was so uh, eve is days. here welcome eve and uh, putting all on right your um slides that you s on the screen everybody should be seeing them and um, thanks for everybody again thanks for being here and uh, we'll start right on the minute and uh, if the floor is yours he's going to introduce himself welcome everybody 
You need to be louder. Eve, are you there? You have to unmute your microphone. Your microphone is still muted. Eve, please unmute your microphone. It's somewhere at the bottom of your screen. You will see six, seven bubbles, and that's the one to the left with the with the microphone icon. Please unmute yourself. Okay, okay there you go. Uh, yeah. Welcome. Thank you very much. Let me put this slide. A up little bit, a, a little bit louder if you can. You're a little bit weak. Okay. Hey. Do you do you hear me? Okay. Do you see the slide now? Yeah, the slides are on, and. Uh, okay. You, so you but can your see voice my, is a, your voice. Can you? Do you see the slides? Yes, we can. Yes, okay, and we also can see it. your face. Oh, you can see my face too. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you okay. do you want your face on the screen or, or and both right? It, it doesn't bother me in the least. <laughs> okay. So we have okay. your your slide, your first slide. Can you see the slide on your screen? Of course, I see my slides. Yeah, it says brewing climate change and pandemic. Do you see it? Tony, you need to take down your slides. Oh, God. Right. Do let, you, let do you, the hold, on, hold on, Stan, hold on, hold on, slides. Stan, hold on. One at a time, please. The, um, Eve, I have the first picture that you sent me, a set of 11 pictures. No, no, no. You told me to bring my PD, I mean, my okay. PowerPoint presentation. So that's what I have now. I, okay. I have this first slide. It's brewing Understood. climate chaos epidemic. Do you see it? Understood. Go to the bottom of your screen and you will see in the bubbles, you will see a square with an up arrow. Click on that oh, one. So I have to get up. Oh, God. Okay. Now, now I'm doing what? At the, at the bottom of the screen, there are six bubbles. Yeah, you see one, there? Two, Circles. Three. Look at the one about the middle, a square, yes. a square with an up. Yes. Click on that one. That has two CCs in it. Then you will see another menu that shows a window. You missed it. You missed it. Hold on. Hold on. The up arrow. Up arrow. Up, up arrow. Not the CCs. Okay. That's it. A square with an up arrow. Sorry? A square with an up arrow. Yeah, yeah. I click on that. It says another white little thing came out. It says present. And yes, present. Present. Oh, click. And then choose okay. your PowerPoint. Uh, don't allow. No, this one's oh, allow mega. Okay. okay, there you go. Perfect. Now? Now you should see on the, on the screen, you should see both your presentation. And there is a, another menu in there that says stop or ignore. Uh, click on ignore. Give a kick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, ignore. And then, my presentation? then I have to click on my my presentation, maybe. Uh, no, you, you are already in, so uh, look for a slide mode or full screen. So we got we got a bigger we be, we got a bigger yeah, screen in here. Here, here is the, the small version of my first slide. Do you see it? Yes. And I'm going to put that exclusively on the screen so that you can, uh, we see it bigger. It, it should also okay, have. I can, I can, yeah, I can make it bigger. Here it is. Bigger. Good. Perfect. That's called slide mode. Great. Okay, so you you all set. 
and uh, you control it from from here. Welcome. Yeah, Thanks yeah, yeah. for taking the time. Eve has the floor. Thank you so much. My name is Evangelos Valianatos. Um, I work for the, I mean, I have a doctor's degree in the history with a special interest in the history of science. I did my postdoctoral uh, studies in the history of science at Harvard. I have written seven books, hundreds of articles, and I worked for the US EPA for 25 years. And uh, this um, knowledge about climate started a long, long time ago. Indeed, um, I have been <laughs> writing almost not exclusively, but I have published a lot of articles on climate change because for the simple reason that I consider it to be the greatest threat to humanity and civilization. So here we start. Um, factories, I consider to be, of course, a tremendous source of pollution and you all will agree with me. Uh, cars is another disaster and especially living in California as I have been for the last 14 years. I mean, I, any morning I walk my dog or I walk for, I take a walk, I am surrounded by large automobiles and probably very few of them are electric cars. And uh, so it's, it's a big, big, big problem for the United States and of course the rest of humanity because they were hooked up on this technology several decades ago. And despite the knowledge and despite the warning of the United Nations and scientists, um, we could keep uh, the business as usual. Um, China is uh, the largest polluter on Earth uh, in terms of climate uh, pollution. Uh, and of course, unfortunately, uh, China is imitating the United States to the, to the T. I have been to China three times and I think the country has tremendous, tremendous potential to lead to a different ecological path. Indeed, the Chinese have been talking about ecological civilization for uh, quite a while, and I congratulate them for that, and I agree with that. And when I have been, when I go to China, I always talk about ecological civilization. Um, in the United States, we're very much uh, almost drunk about this technology or whatever we have, depending that is on fossil fuels. And as you can see here, uh, the owners of this oil refinery in Houston are very patriotic, so they had to put the American flag on it too. Um, the, the refining and doing these works with uh, fossil fuels, of course, has its dangers. And in this picture, you can see a kind of a fire that took that broke out in Port Arthur, Texas. And uh, Port Arthur, Texas happens to be also a community that most of the people are non-white, <laughs> and they, they suffer tremendously. Uh, they suffer tremendously from pollution, and uh, if they work, they, they definitely don't get uh, what they deserve. Um, there have been resistance to all this, of course, and uh, in this picture you can see a kind of a effort uh, long time ago in the against the uh, drilling in the Arctic, um, but uh, the uh, the movement continues. Um, industrialization is the main uh, problem. I mean, uh, I'm not against uh, machines but I'm against machines that, that uh, rely on petroleum, natural gas, and, and coal. I mean, they, uh, we should have known better, but we seem to be continuing like um, lemmings to jump over the cliff. Uh, the temperature of the planet, of course, continues to be up. And in this slide, you can see the rising uh, temperatures after uh, 1950. And uh, for millennia, of course, the carbon emissions were about 300 parts per million. Uh, but suddenly, on the late 19th and early 20th century, now we have reached to the 420 parts per million of carbon dioxide. And uh, on this picture, you can see the red part represents the, um, uh, the greenhouse gases, uh, methane, uh, carbon dioxide, and so on. Uh, this was a picture taken by NASA in 2014. Uh, here's another picture by NASA again in 2015. It was also a very hot year. And um, the again, the the rising of the carbon dioxide um, has nowhere else to go but up because we are uh, slipping on the wheel, so to speak. And meanwhile, business as usual continues. And this is a picture of coal mining in eastern Kentucky. And of course, the uh, representative of Kentucky in the, in the Senate, uh, he is very happy and he says there's no climate change following the nonsense of former President um, uh, 
Trump and, of course, all, most of the Republican Party continue to argue and to say that we don't have any problem with global warming. Um, now, the trees, of course, give us uh, all sorts of benefits. Um, and uh, here in this picture, you can see the moisture that comes out of the, uh, out of the trees. Uh, but uh, cutting down the trees that is deforested in an area is uh, it's, it's like the, uh, the, the exercise of genocide against human beings. And here we have ecocide. Uh, if you cut down a forest, you destroy the habitat for who knows how many creatures, could be thousands, could be hundreds. They have to run away. And of course, uh, who knows whether they're going to find an alternative uh, house. It's the same thing with us. If there's a major earthquake, where can we go? <laughs> I mean, uh, in Brazil, um, they keep with the forest in. And of course, the last president they had, uh, Bolsonaro, he made it his business to convert as much of the Amazon forest into um, into plantations to grow soybeans so they can sell the soybeans to the Europeans or to the Americans in order to feed their pigs and horses and so on and so on. He's destroying uh, the lungs of the planet, so to speak, in order to make uh, an extra dollar. Um, something we are very much accustomed to doing this in this country, of course. Uh, the clear cut, and this is a picture from Oregon, I have been to Oregon several times, and especially after I wrote my book, Poison Spring, I went there to give a number of talks. Uh, this is a clear cut in, in uh, the forest in Amazon, in, in Oregon, and you can see it's total devastation. There's no, no, no joke about that. There's nothing left after the, after the clear cut. In. And not only that, but they send helicopters and they spray so they can kill out everything that survives the mechanical devastation. Uh, meanwhile, the forests, of course, react to the rise in temperatures. And uh, uh, for instance, there's a pine beetle that um, thrives on rising temperatures, so it infests uh, trees and it kills them slowly. And the other effect, of course, of uh, rising temperatures is uh, thunderstorms. I mean, the weather events are becoming more and more violent, and we can see them all the time. Uh, starting with flooding, uh, this picture shows the James River flooding in South Dakota in 2020. Uh, we have flooding uh, here in Indonesia, in Switzerland, in the Netherlands, um, in China, um, in India, and here is of course in New Jersey and Pakistan this summer. Uh, most of Pakistan apparently, or at least half of the country was flooded. And the effects of course, uh, who knows uh, what uh, the people who were flooded would they recover their property if it was a house that was flooded and so on. Here is very much personal. I mean, I live in Clermont, uh, California, and the picture you see is a giant, red, uh, gigantic, uh, over 100 years old tree that was uprooted completely and dropped on this uh, college building in uh, Clermont. And um, so, and this happened because we had a strong wind. So a, a strong wind uprooted dozens of trees like this all over Clermont. So you drive today or you walk today in Clermont, you will not see a trace that there was ever a tree like this in that in that area. And now the question, of course, about Clermont is, have we learned anything? No, they have not. Uh, I mean, they keep business as usual, uh, uh, just like and nothing happened. Um, we see uh, a picture, a NASA picture of the Hurricane Inn uh, covering the entire state of Florida. And this happened only a few months ago, September 29, 2022. And uh, the destruction was uh, phenomenal. <laughs> you can see cars dropped all over everything. Uh, this is another picture of the same disaster from the Hurricane Ian in Florida. Uh, and of course, this is another gigantic picture of destruction, again in Florida. And um, now we come to another effect of growing uh, global temperatures is the melting of glaciers that keep all this gigantic amount of fresh water there for decades and centuries. Um, the, um, the amount of fresh uh, of glaciers is, is shrinking. And here in this picture on the upper part, you see what was a hundred years ago, all the ice pretty much in space, in place. And the lower picture shows you all the ice gone, uh, melted into water. Uh, from Alaska, we have this area that you see is water is nothing but, um, it used to be covered by ice, no more. Um, the um, permafrost, what we call permafrost, um, it's it kind of a, a, a land that has, is almost like frozen land. 
But if you begin to unfreeze it, <laughs> then you immediately release enormous amounts of, of uh, greenhouse gases. And there's a quotation I have from a scientific article about the horrific amounts of stuff that is coming out by um, global warming because the soil is becoming warmer and all this stuff begins to uh, join the atmosphere to our own regret. Um, in the um, in the polar bear, a polar bear, of course, uh, have trouble because the ice, which they supported themselves in order to go fishing, is melting, and some of them are starving to death. Um, and we also have people that are beginning to move away from intense uh, heat, extreme heat, like in Africa. And here is a picture showing all these refugees in Mali. Uh, Africa. And of course, this is going to be um, uh, a, a great, a great crisis for the whole planet. The longer we wait to do anything to uh, slow down the global warming. Um, this is just a beautiful territory in Northern California, in contrast to the uh, to the problems we have describing. Um, a drought is another one of the other effects of uh, growing t temperature. And here is drought in southeastern uh, United States. You can see the uh, the design and the effects from 206 down to 2020. Um, the longer we come, to, the more we come to our time, 2022, the more uh, the red the color and therefore the more extensive drought, therefore the less water, the less rain, uh, the more problems of raising food. Um, Rivers End is just a documentary about uh, the politics, uh, the dirty politics of water in California. Uh, the farmers of the Central Valley of California, uh, I don't know how many of you are from California, but you need to go to the Central Valley to understand uh, this. Uh, it's a gigantic area that used to be like paradise, and they have leveled it, and they have divided it into gigantic chunks of, of, uh, of farms, and there they grow one crop in order to, to make whatever. Um, and um, this uh, experts, these people that made the documentary came to my class last semester, I was teaching at the university, and they talk extensively and they let us uh, see the documentary and we talked about them. And they're very, very dismal in their assessment. Um, the politics is uh, decades old and it's very uh, dangerous because 80% of the drinking water of the state is used by this small number of farmers who grow, among other things, um, um, walnuts and uh, almonds, especially almonds, uh, and each almond, remember it's about uh, what, uh, less than an inch uh, long, demands one gallon of water, drinking water. And they, what do they produce so much um, of this stuff that they export. So they export in the diminishing amount of water of California, and yet the state of California is doing nothing to stop them. Okay, now the drinking water, of course, is we cannot do without water. I mean, uh, in uh, Greek uh, philosophical times in uh, the 7th century BC, we had philosophers um, uh, that they said, look, uh, water is the structure that makes up everything. And in fact, the whole earth is more or less <laughs> surrounded by water and, and it's floating on water. Uh, this was done uh, by a philosopher of the 7th century named Thales, uh, the first uh, natural philosopher of ancient Greece. Um, now, back to California, uh, we see the effects of global warming on Lake Mead in California, and Lake Mead is one of the two largest reservoirs of water from the Colorado River, and here is the effect of global warming. Now, we can see the picture on the left is from 20, 2000, and the picture on the right is from 2021, and you can see the diminishing amount of water left in uh, that reservoir. And finally, this is another NASA picture where you have uh, 2000, 2021, and 2022. Compare the, the two, uh, the middle and the one on the right, to see within one year the, the difference of the amount of water left in uh, this reservoir. Um, this is another effect of this uh, horrific situation. Uh, and then we go to Lake Powell, which is the other large reservoir for water. Uh, we face the same problems. Um, I mean, it's a uh, it's, the, the facts are there. It's just a matter that we have politicians who regrettably are not courageous enough to follow their unconsciousness and especially to follow the warnings from scientists and science of global warming and they just keep business as usual. Um, uh, another uh, effect in California again, this is uh, Tule Lake. Um, 
up in Northern California, and it used to be a beautiful, vast wetland, and here is now, it's a desert. Um, the uh, Mount Sasta is another mountain in California, and it was without snow this winter. I mean, last winter. Um, this is an aqueduct uh, flowing through the desert of California. Uh, we can see the California River. This river is drying up. Um, and uh, we have the, you know, there was a fantastic book published in 1987 called Cadillac Desert, which I used each time I teach. This is a beautiful book because this guy really <laughs> spent time going through the politics of the water in California and why they do what they do, explaining the politics of the water, the misuse of water misuse um, in uh, great in the Central Valley and so on. So for those of you who are really interested in this water question, please read this, uh, this book, Cadillac Desert. Um, and, you know, they said the, this is uh, coming from the Los Angeles Times, um, August 26, 2022. And this reporter uh, is talking about the change in nature of what you see if you drive uh, and you can see all these coal plants uh, that they are closing, uh, rivers are drying up and uh, record crowds are packing uh, national parks and so on. And uh, wildfires are getting deadlier and so on and so on and but however he's he's a little bit of the opt not optimistic but he says that the work from home boom are uh, driving big city uh, residents to smaller more scenic locales uh, i mean this is uh, completely nonsense um the joshua's uh, meanwhile says of course joshua trees are threatening uh, are threatened and the oceans, uh, uh, water is rising. Um, oh, wait a second. <clears throat> oh, here. Of course, he of course he highlights in his uh, lengthy article that uh, uh, the people in the in the desert, because of what they do, they are threatening uh, biological diversity and especially the survival of this beautiful bird. And um, so it's a. Uh, it's, we have we have a tremendous problem in our hands. Uh, this picture shows you the headquarters of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in, uh, in Washington D.C. Uh, I spent 25 years of my life working for this agency. I was, when I was when I started in 1979, uh, you know, I knew very little. I had a doctor's degree in history <laughs> with the studies in the history of science, and um, I was all full of hope and that uh, this institution, which uh, was founded, by the way, by Richard Nixon in 1970, uh, had good intents, and of course it did. I mean, it, um, it promoted, and we have uh, uh, some excellent laws: the Clean Water, uh, Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, um, and other laws that uh, were written with, by imaginary politicians in the early 70s. And um, they tried to clean up because the country was in dire situations. I mean, there was a river in, in uh, near um, in, what was this uh, Cleveland, Ohio, that caught fire. I mean, there was a lot of petroleum and so on uh, floating on the river. But uh, the EPA, unfortunately, because uh, of the different administrations and different politics of the Republicans versus the Democrats, they have caught the attention of the polluters, and the polluters, of course, have plenty of money, and they take all these congressmen senators to dinner, and they bribe them indirectly, and they do their bidding, which is to, when something important comes up and the scientists of EPA say, this is what we now need to do, and, you know, the political appointee with the agency just ignores that recommendation, and they do something that feels good, and it pretends to do something that is really not there. Um, and uh, one of the greatest uh, anxieties I have had since I started working for the EPA was all about the use and misuse of these chemicals known as pesticides. Uh, the real name of those chemicals should be biocides, that is, they kill everything. They are designed to kill. And by the way, they are also petrochemicals, meaning they are made out of petroleum. So this is an additional use of the stuff that causes global warming. And what you see here are the, in a kind of a, um, a hot house, there's people dressed like spacecraft uh, men, uh, but spraying uh, most likely fungicide to kill fungi. And of course, people are supposed to eat the stuff that they spray. Um, the political corruption in, uh, in, uh, in America is uh, very deep and goes uh, back uh, 
couple of hundred years. Uh, but I worked uh, at the US EPA from the Carter administration down to the mid uh, level career, mid uh, part of the George W. Bush administration. And I saw a variety of Democrats and uh, Republican presidents and how they affected the use of EPA and what the EPA did and so on. And of course, in 2014, I published my, my book about the EPA, which is called Poison Spring. And I hope some of you might actually read it. Uh, one of the key elements of the early 70s was the DDT. And uh, everybody was singing, DDT is good for me. <laughs> and look at this picture where young children are within the dust of this uh, spray. Think of it, the uh, level of culture and civilization when they allow children to go through this deadly chemical. But of course, the, uh, the understanding of the deadly chemical in the 70s was not what it is today, but nevertheless, they should have been, they were already worn. I mean, Rachel Cashon had published her book in 1962, and she was concerned about the, about the effects of the DDT in particular on, on, bird, on birds. Birds that came in touch with this chemical could not procreate. That is the, the cell that uh, the tiny little uh, chick is being hatched is so fragile so that the mother bird or the father bird uh, been over that uh, uh, egg, it crashes it, and therefore there's no way that uh, a bird will actually be able to have uh, um, a young. Uh, so they die. Uh, here is another uh, picture of spraying DDT over, over sheep, if you can believe it, 1948. So we are going all the way to the forest. And of course, the people who manufacture DDT, and they had a large factory of it in LA, in Los Angeles, if you can believe it, they began to dump all their waste into, guess where? Near the harbor of the Los Angeles, Los Angeles, uh, megalopolis, you know. They, and they did it at the knowledge of several agencies within California. They knew about the dumping, and yet they did nothing. So a, a biologist from the University of California, Santa Barbara, discovered this by accident. Uh, and it was, what, it was 2021. And they started now, and they found that there are several hundred thousand barrels leaking uh, overturn and so on uh, covering who knows how many square uh, uh, miles of the ocean floor and you know we have wildlife in the ocean uh, seals for instance dolphins if they eat fish which have been um, um, exposed to this chemical they of course they themselves get cancer or they cannot procreate so it's a, it's a, it's a horror story and of course, uh, this beautiful bird, which is uh, unique to California, uh, the condor, California condor, is uh, having these problems that uh, birds had in the 60s with DDT. That is, he cannot procreate. So they have, the government, fortunately, they have taken enough of these uh, birds and they, they raise them away from DDT and they give them food that is not contaminated with DDT. So there may be a hope for this bird. But when you see a person like this doing this, what, what hope do you have? <laughs> I mean, he's killing everything. <laughs> That's, uh, in uh, 2006, I wrote a book about, uh, about large farmers, and I said uh, large farmers uh, threaten the world. And indeed they do, because they spray the most. They have large of the, the largest amount of land, which has the largest amount of endangered species, uh, which die because of what they do. They grow one crop, they spray a lot of chemicals. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not pleasant at all. Um, and finally, we come to this idea of the factory farm. What is this factory farm? And these people are protesting the factory farms. And there's a reason to protest them. Uh, factory farms are like this, this picture. I took a picture. I took this picture in the Central Valley. Uh, they have dozens, maybe hundreds, sometimes thousands of these animals very close to each other. And then they feed them. They keep eating, they keep eating, they keep eating. And of course, that's the only pleasure because they, after a year or two years, they slaughter them. So in the process of being very close to each other, of course, they create disease. Um, and so to avoid uh, all of them dying at the same time, they put pharmaceuticals into their food. So they eat antibiotics in addition to wheat or soybeans or whatever. And therefore, you that you love a steak, guess what you're eating? <laughs> I recommend you stop eating meat. Um, this is a picture from China. The Chinese are doing exactly what we're doing. And you can see the... Uh, and of course, they end up, all these animals uh, end up in the slaughterhouse. You can see the slaughtering. And then, of course, the birds themselves and now the animals get cancer, just like we do. Um, and they have no way to go to kill, to, to, to 
kill themselves. And this is just a picture from a beautiful shield uh, in an isolated uh, corner of Greece. Um, now, protection of the natural world is extremely difficult. I remember when I was teaching in Northern California and at Humboldt State University, um, some of my students and other students were climbing up trees to, uh, to protect the trees from being cut down. Well, I mean, this is, this is dangerous stuff. And I, I talked to my colleagues, professors, but they themselves said, well, what, what, what could we do? Uh, one of the environmental groups that is doing something is uh, Greenpeace, and they have been doing this for decades. And um, we see pictures uh, here as a woman, a lawyer, an international lawyer in England, protesting that she had been in prison because of what she was doing. Um, uh, this is about climate, says get off climate. Uh, and, and by the way, in 1988-89, I was uh, teaching up in Northern California, and I wrote my first article on climate change. And uh, as you can see, the title is Lower the Earth Threatening Heat. And because the article appeared in the, in the Chicago Tribune in Chicago, and it's a major newspaper, uh, the moment uh, this was uh, published, six months later, it was reprinted, partly reprinted by Wall, the Wall Street Journal. And I found a letter of reprimand on my desk. They were trying to fire me because I wrote this article. Fortunately, the administrator thought differently and, uh, and he was with me and he said just uh, don't worry about it and nothing happened but nevertheless it's just an, uh, a symptom of the mentality of people being hooked up to a certain idea or a certain chemical or whatever it is a cigarette or whatever that this is this solution there's no diversity no no different solution um uh all these pictures that I have telling you uh, part of this story, uh, here we have President Joe Biden at the United Nations Conference in, in 2021 in Scotland, uh, making his appeal and pretending to be the defender of climate, the, the defender of the earth and so on. And here we have the Chinese counterpart, President Xi Jinping, uh, doing the, exactly the same thing in the United Nations. And meanwhile, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says, hey, you, the way you go, we are going to over to go beyond the 1.5 degree uh, Celsius. Uh, and if we go above that, there will be catastrophic consequences. A catastrophic, catastrophe is, uh, it's, uh, in Greek, it's a Greek word that means disaster. I mean, just complete desolation. So, and, uh, you know, young people, when they discover some of what I'm telling you right now, they get all upset, all worked up, and they protest. Uh, but then after that, they have to go home and they continue to do what they do. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, they said some great truths, like, for instance, you have all these prime ministers and presidents going to this international uh, uh, summits, and what do they do? They say, blah, 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 blah. They, they don't make any promise. When they say, we're going to have this uh, and this, uh, nevertheless, unfortunately, they don't do it. And Guterres has the courage to tell them, hey, you're liars. In fact, he has put it in writing. And I quote him in a, in a new book that I have been writing about this. Um, now, uh, and this is the this year's uh, global uh, summit on climate in Egypt. And uh, here you have, again, young men and women say, stop funding fossil fuels. And guess what? In fact, we are still funding fossil fuels at the tune of almost $700 billion per year. Think of it. Knowing fully well that the burden of this this uh, stuff is causing global warming, we are still paying the, the the fossil fuel companies to do what they have been doing. That this it's, it's like we are suicidal, like we are insane, and we don't know what what we're doing. That's that's what it is. Uh, this little island in uh, in the Pacific, Tuvalu, is sinking, and the prime minister <laughs> he came up, he wrote a letter, and I got a copy of the letter. And I quote him verbatim in my new book. And he says, no, look, we, I'm, I'm sinking. The whole island is sinking. That is, the water is rising. And as you can see this picture, the, uh, this uh, building is going to be out the water. Maybe in two years, three years, five years, who knows? But it's sinking. Nevertheless, few people give a damn what, what's happening to Tuvalu. Because it's a tiny little island. Um, and in, uh, this is a very dramatic picture uh, from the 2022 meeting. It says, Don fail us. These are young men and women, and I, I wish them all the, all the best and I'm with them, but uh, regrettably, I think we're going to fail them if we continue to do what we'll be doing all along. Uh, China, as I said already, I have uh, great hopes for China. Uh, I love the country. It's a great country, a great civilization, and they have all sorts of opportunities, but as I told the Chinese scientists when I 
was giving talks in China. I said, yes, it's nice. Go to the United States and learn as much as you can, but do not imitate the Americans in agriculture <laughs> and a number of other things. Get extract information and technology from your past. You have a millennia worth of history. You don't need anybody to tell you that you want to spray pesticides. You can do grow rice without pesticides and keep the tremendous variety of rice you have and so on. Um, the New York Times uh, put this picture up and said this is the picture of the of a, a still uh, plant in China which is supposed to produce to emit the greatest amount of carbon uh, gases uh, uh, on Earth. Um, this, the rest of the pictures are pretty much uh, continue the same story of the effects of high temperature. Um, uh, this is, I have a couple of pictures from uh, Greece where I was born. And here you have the, the lower part of Greece, Peloponnesus is on fire in 207, in the summer of 207, August, you see the August 207. And then two years later, again in August 209, again on fire. And they do that intentional because of tourism. They want to create more hotels, more motels, more highways, and so on and so on, to attract more Europeans, more Africans, more Asians, or whatever, to spend their money because the country is bankrupt. So this is the only, they call it the greatest tourism, the, the, the largest industry they have in Greece is, is tourism. Uh, so they are destroying the environment because of that. I, I mean, I'm very much against it, and I think it's, it's stupid. Um, these are fires in the Amazon. Um, this is the Amazon burning, um, protest against the Amazon. Here you have fires in Australia. And this is a picture that, I mean, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, the power of this picture. You can see uh, you are in Borneo, Indonesia. And what do they do in Borneo, in Indonesia, just like in Brazil? They cut down the forest to grow plantations, to grow soybeans, to sell to the Europeans, to sell to the Americans, and to help with, uh, with the wildlife. And here you have all this... Uh, um, disasters with this uh, baby um, baby animals. Uh, they're trying to save them um, from extinction. <clears throat> uh, fires uh, all everywhere. In California, we have had tremendous amount of fire everywhere. Um, the smoke from the fires is absolutely dangerous. Um, and here is a picture I took in San Francisco. <laughs> I was walking and suddenly the, 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 the breeze, the gigantic breeze disappeared. And look at the picture. You can see the car, and then above it is the bridge, the gigantic bridge. It disappeared. Why? Because there was a fire, a forest fire not far away from there, and the smoke had covered the whole atmosphere. And you can see the effect. This is it. Um, and then, of course, the, the people who are concerned about all this, they say, okay, we go to solar and wind. And in wind, they created these monsters, these gigantic uh, towers that they will wipe out any bird that gets even near them. They're, indeed gigantic. Some of them are 150 meters uh, tall. I mean, uh, it's just, just a terror uh, for, for wildlife. Uh, and there's uh, an alternative to that. I mean, this picture shows you uh, here in California in um, uh, the um, Palm Springs. So you can see on the upper part, the windmills, and on the lower part, the highways with the countless number of automobiles. Um, to construct a windmill is quite, quite an operation in the environment. It's destructive, it's gigantic, and it's uh, just, as I said, it's, uh, it's not uh, friendly to the environment or to people or to anybody else. Here you are. Um, um, capitalism, yeah, capitalism is the economic system that we all pretend all we have, including China. And capitalism is, uh, it's, uh, they, this, this people says capitalism and extinction. And, uh, they, they certainly have a lot of weight uh, to say. This woman says capitalism is the virus. <laughs> Think of it. Um, and this is another dramatic picture of this young woman uh, uh, say, hey, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Um, and finally, this is uh, a dead uh, goat uh, in Africa and uh, close to this, uh, this tree. Um, planet over profit. That was the the protest of these young men and women in this uh, conference in Egypt. Uh, but then, of course, uh, suddenly the Americans and the Europeans decided to join the Ukraine against Russia. And, of course, a war is the greatest uh, uh, promoter of global warming because, uh, you know, the machinery uh, or the petroleum and all these disasters and all these efforts to create energy and so on. So if you fight a war, you immediately 
turn away from what you should be doing, which is to get into uh, clean energy and you keep uh, the dirty energy to kill uh, people in the Ukraine and Russia. And I'm against it. Um, <clears throat> and the solution is, of course, this solution is the uh, solar panels. And you can see, you see the solar panels over my house. Um, and that was it. Uh, so I thank you. And this is, uh, and I'm be delighted if we have uh, enough time to respond to your questions. Awesome presentation, uh, Eve. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time, putting all this together. Um, it's, uh, we have five minutes in this hour segment, and the floor is open now for questions to Eve. And uh, so mute yeah, your microphone. Get... Uh, mute your microphone. Everybody that has a question, uh, mute your microphone. And we will continue after the five minutes. We will continue to the second hour. Uh, if you uh, would like to stay with us, that, that's fine. The link is in the chat box. So please, um, any questions, anyone, unmute your microphone. I have a question. So sorry if I jump in. Um, my name is Ge it's Tony. People know me as Geovox. Um, I'm a, a supporter of the hydrogen economy. Um, I, at university, it was one of the things I studied um, under my own steam uh, and found that because the hydrogen ec economy gives us not only electricity, but by using electrolysis to split water, when we recombine it through fuel cells, we get water back. So actually, the hydrogen economy can be a way of um, desalinating water and various other technologies that are being developed. My question to Eve is, do you believe that if we were to combine the Move Your Money uh, movement resurrected and get people to move to ethical banks like Triodos Bank here in Europe, we can get enough funding to kickstart a massive investment avalanche in the hydrogen economy. If you look at hydrogen, um, I think it's called Hydrogen News. Um, it's a website that has an awful lot of information. You'll see a lot of very large companies are signing up to hydrogen. Bosch, um, companies that size. So thank you for listening. Uh, yes, thank you for the question. And I I must admit that I don't know very much about the hydrogen uh, connection to global warming, but certainly if it does not um, emit uh, bad stuff that warms the planet, I think that's it. Yeah, and, but, and, and I agree, however, uh, much more with your point that we need to have a massive, a kind of a very active and energetic protest against what the, the status quo with the petroleum and natural gas and coal and make the transition. I mean, solar panels are the transition. If we put solar panels over everybody's home, everybody's home, factories, every parking lot, every mall, every space that is available, I think we'll, at least we would make a, a big of a difference. The other big difference, of course, would be to, to, to stop war to stop the war and focus and work together. Unless China and the United States, the two largest polluters on earth, get to work together, there's not much of a hope. And this is perhaps the apathy of the average person. They say, what can I do? I mean, look at China. They, 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 they know the politics, they see the contrast, they see the Cold War, they feel the Cold War, in fact. And they see the, the disaster that we see every day in the news. We have had all these fantastic destructions in the United States. In Florida, for instance, Ian, that uh, Hurricane Ian destroyed a lot of Florida. And yet, if you go to Florida today, they say there's no global government. So it's a kind of a, a kind of a, a transcendental, almost a metaphysical transition you have to make to, to us to, to take word and say science is actually something we should follow. This is what the proof is. This is what the truth is. And unless we accept the truth, we are doomed. One minute. I mean, that's truth. One minute. This and, is what... Uh, yeah, what? We'll continue, last, we'll continue in the second hour, just alerting everybody that uh, the link is in the chat box. Just copy it and paste it in the, in the same tab or a new tab, and you're back in. So we're less than one minute. 
Uh, Google, <laughs> Google is going to cut us uh, with um, with uh, no uh, no warnings. They cut us cold. We have a few seconds to go. So please, everybody, copy that link, paste it in the in the new tab, a new window, or in the same window. Doesn't matter. Just click on it, and uh, we'll see you back in here. Oh, see see you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. Hi. We'll go for the second segment. Um, Google gives us uh, one hour free, so it has to go into two segments. It's, um, it's pretty painless and uh, it works well. And we're still live on Facebook. Welcome, mother. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the, the first hour. It's a little, it's a complicated business. It's uh, the damage is extensive, very complex, but we have to find a solution to this. That's what we do here every Saturday. We've been doing online for the last four years. That's and brilliant. There are, um, uh, as I say, my, um, one of the things that I'm trying to promote is resurrecting the move your money movement because without moving money away from the banks, they will continue to fund fossil fuels. That's brilliant. So, um, this is exactly right. If there will, if there's a chance to perhaps ask people, have they any thoughts about this? Um, I don't know whether in America you have, uh, ethical banks. Um, here in Europe, we have Triodos and a couple of others, but... Not familiar with those. We have uh, co-ops, and some co-ops have started aligning themselves with uh, environmental concerns, but not that many, uh, including the, the people that go by the name permaculture. And uh, they started the co-op here in uh, and then they moved to New Mexico. I don't, I believe it never took off really that much. It was just, uh, I had a, um, an account in there for some time and then I, I stopped hearing from them. I met the founders, I spoke with them. Uh, the concerns that you bring about that is we're going to address them. There's a speaking in, in January, mid-January, if everything goes well. Uh, and uh, Gia, you are you are welcome to put to put your presentation or invite someone, and let's talk about that. Uh, make a presentation to That'd edit the slides, and uh, it's part of the program. Is how to move into a uh, ecologically sustainable economy and the social, economic, and political infrastructure that will support that 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 type of things. So it's absolutely right, and but, uh, how to keep. Because yeah, one of the things, one of the things to point out to people, particularly investors, is that right now fossil fuels may be looking like a really good option because of the uh, the Ukrainian crisis, um, but hydrogen is going to be coming online, and so buying shares in hydrogen now will profit them hugely when the fossil fuels get abandoned just because people are waking up to what's happening. So that, that's one of the contentions I have about ethical banking. I've just posted on the in-call messages the Wikipedia page on ethical banking. So anybody who wants to can go and take a look um, and see whether there's an ethical bank where you are. So thanks for that. It's a great topic. Um... Also very complex. Uh, it could be solved. Um, I have some suggestions that uh, we've talk, spoke sp have spoken about that before. I presented in here also some of those. 
I have some materials. I have a paper written on that. I can, I'll send it to you. Brilliant. And uh, that is, uh, it's, it's been published in the peer reviewed journal and also in, um, in, 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 in it, it's the, it's the whole subject. It, after getting, seeing a pot of gold, uh, capitalists, oligarchs want to, at the end of the year, want another pot of gold or at least 10 or, or 10 or 20 percent on that investment, a return on investment, it's called investment, profit. And that's something that is not easy to break, <laughs> to move in yes. a different direction. Uh, it's uh, rather complicated because uh, because the social, economic, and political forces that are on on the scene, that are on the table, and has been it has been that way for the last uh, five hundred years, thousand years, you know, starting with um, land owners and I know I'm from Rome. It, I come yeah, from Rome. Even, even, even before that, yeah, 4,000 years ago, yeah, right, going back to Rome and uh, Sumeria, Abyssinia, Egypt. And beyond. And beyond, yeah. So it has been with yeah. us for yeah. the greed has, uh, has been the seed for that. People want a, a look, I got this pot of gold, is isn't doing anything, I want 10% I want, uh, on it. Uh, at the end of yeah. the year, or more, or 20, or double it. So, um, not an easy problem to solve, but it's either uh, either we solve it, or uh, it's not doom. I keep, keep saying that, it's not a doom vision. It's that, that gold represents things on the planet air, water, food, energy, yeah. and all of those things, plants and animals. And if we um, my question, press them, if we press my question them, to just, a lot just, of just people. finish, just Sorry. finish the start. If we press those forces, like we've been pressing, eating at the planet by releasing CO2, in science it's called entropy. By releasing yeah. those forces, they are unstoppable. They are unstoppable, and they mm. work by themselves. Those are forces of na nature. There's something. They are not our forces. There's they something that will themselves. happen. Sorry to interrupt, but there's something that will happen a long time before that, and that is that young people, when they realize that the time has come when they have no future, will have nothing to lose, and they will be murdering us in our thousands. This is not. Uh, uh, a scary, uh, this is not a sort of um, empty threat. This is what's going to happen because they will have nothing to live for. And those of us who have been fighting all our lives have been saying it for a long time. I've been an environmentalist since 1982. And I've been saying the kids will wake up one day. Greta is the gentle end of that movement. At the other end of that movement, Terrorism doesn't begin to describe what they will do because they will have nothing. They won't be able to have children. They will not be able to have families. They will have no future, no food other than us. And this is something I've been telling people on Facebook quite blunt bluntly. Don't think that the kids are stupid. They know more than us. They're grown up with this. So it's up to us to show, look, we can make a joint movement, the young and the elderly, because it looks like the elderly are the ones who are standing up for them. It's us, the grandparents. No doubt, no doubt. It's, it's, we are, yeah, we're playing with fire. And, and uh, it, it, it's, it's the, uh, the, uh, the, the the planetary forces are are really uh, they can they can do all of that they can do all of that that's that's once at, at some point life human life 
not life, not not all of life, but human life will, becomes impossible. And the, those, um, um, Eve mentioned uh, Guterres. I think he's on the ball, uh, other than uh, um, I do not totally agree with the plans that uh, the major corporations behind the UN and behind <clears throat> and oligarchs behind the UN are, are making uh, for several reasons, mostly mostly scientific reasons. I don't agree with those propositions that I am ma making or not making. But uh, Guterres in, uh, was here at uh, University, Columbia University, which is one of our best. It's ranked on the top 10 universities in the country. And it's one of the best universities in the world. Uh, in December, uh, December to, a couple of years ago, to, to 2019, if I'm not mistaken, and he uh, spoke to graduates, and the uh, session in that was the named the um, cities, the the, for, the cities forum or or nations forum. And he started by we have uh, he started by just a few a minute less than a minute we. We have global warming, we have uh, uh, ice melting, we have um, uh, extinction, uh, biodiversity extinction, and on and on. And uh, he, he, he uh, put out a, a single sentence that goes like this, quote, humanity is on a suicidal path, unquote. So it's chilling. I heard that. It's chilling. So this is this this comes this this comes. The thought comes from someone that knows and uh, and conducts the IPCC, the Inter Panel on Climate Change, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, for the last twenty years, thirty years. This coming. This is coming from. Uh, Rio in 1992, where there were two speeches in there that were really keystone, keystone picture uh, speeches. One from Severn um, Suzuki, the daughter of David Suzuki, a Canadian, and uh, she raised her money to go. She was not invited. She raised five thousand dollars for herself and two other mates, both both aged twelve years, thirty years ago, before Greta, before all of the names now that we have. And she started by by raising her finger to the audience, and among them, you can see on on the YouTube video, among them was Bush Senior trying to hide his face in there. I mean, such such an hypocrite and a coward. He was trying to, to hide the face to, to, to the cameras. And uh, rest in peace. He's no longer with us. And uh, she says, you there in the audience, you are the adults in the room. You better start acting like adults. This was before Greta and uh, before uh, everyone else in 1992 in Rio. And she raised the money to get there by selling chocolate cake and lemon, lemon cake and lemon pie in Canada. Her father, didn't, David, didn't, didn't pitch in and, uh, to, fl to fly to Rio. Another grown-up this uh, the, the, this uh, speech in there that was uh, Fidel Castro from Cuba, and he says mainly in, in in a few words, "I'm ready when you are. Let's start right now." To all of the nations on the planet present in there, let's start. We have no time to lose. I'm ready. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves, let's get started. Well, 30 years later, nobody has. 
with still CO2 is still going up. Oil is still going up uh, every day, 100 million barrels at the moment. That's 162 million tons every day. We are trapping heat at the amount of 600,000 Hiroshima type bombs every single day. And those are the forms of nature, those are the forces of nature. They don't work because we write formulas or make equations. They work on themselves. They don't need formulas. They don't need mathematicians. They don't need chemists or physicians or general relativity. They work by themselves. We have no power to stop them. So that's the threat to the planet. planet the planet should be placed number one on the agenda. Uh, discourses, uh, discussions like this should be going on every single day. Change, change the change the, the, the discourse, change the dialogue, and they should go viral. That's the solution that I, in my opinion, needs to happen and find out how we can reduce the, um, the uh, what's called the human footprint from, that was uh, the concept from William Rees at the University of British Columbia. Columbia. In, uh, in Canada, the distribution of resources, basically it's skewed, badly, badly skewed. The bottom line, but the bottom uh, number of the population, half of the population, four billion people, we have eight billion on the planet currently, four billion people live on zero to four dollars a day, zero dollars subsistence to four dollars a day. That's half of the population. And the rest takes the 20 countries, just 20 countries, use 80 percent of the resources of the planet, air, water, food, not just energy, everything everything so what are we going to do what, what are we going to ask what, what what anyone would ask to someone living on zero to four dollars a day give me your shoes heck they don't have any shoes they don't even act, have shoes or give me your shirt no they're trying to uh, to take over the land, take over the resources, take whatever resources that are, are in their countries and, and use those resources to sustain the consumerism, the amounts of, of exorbitant, obscene amounts, like Rob, Robert Plant uh, would say, the obscene amounts, excessive amounts of, of a handful of countries. So that disparity and that difference in, in, in quality and quantity needs to be addressed and that's what needs to, to be addressed while some, some countries want to maintain their excessive consumption and other countries don't, don't seem to, to, to have a, a, a not even sufficient to, to maintain their lives and their families. Um, planet should be on top. Planet should be on top, on top of everything. Welcome, welcome back, everyone. Uh, the microphone is open. Any um, any questions? I don't see Eve coming back. I'm gonna send him another invitation to join us. See if. Um, Mm, he says he sent me a message in here. He's having a heart. He's having a. Otherwise, the floor is open. It's um, a mute your microphone. Wait for. 
a moment of silence like it is right now. I may seem distracted, but again, I'm pushing buttons in here. <laughs> um, I wanted to let... I, I want, I've got something to say, but I wanted to let others speak because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to take over. I've, I'm so excited about this whole thing. I'm just really excited about meeting people who've got a proactive attitude, but others may have things to say, so I'll give them away. You're most welcome. If nobody is, is taking the, the floor, it's it's yours. Okay. First come for In that case, I have a, a, a pretty focus question, which is uh, America is the largest player, um, undeniably. The credit union movement has been identified as one of the most powerful um, attractors, if you like. It's the magnet away from main street banks in the US. And there is a credit union National Association of America who represent uh, all the credit unions. And I understand from the Wikipedia um, article, which I'm going to post um, in the chat, uh, that they also have um, the infrastructure to support new credit unions and so on. I wonder whether it, there might be some mileage in making connections with them and proposing that they consider um, launching through their network of credit unions um, a dialogue with hydrogen producers. There are already some ready to go and what they need is funding. Funding is needed for both R&D and implementation of new hydrogen uh, production. From And here I would have to differentiate between hydrogen. There, are, there is blue hydrogen, green hydrogen, pink hydrogen, and gray hydrogen. So blue and green, they basic, basically come from hydrocarbons, from the reformation, steam reformation of gas. Um, or the breakdown of oil and other oil products. Um, whereas pink hydrogen is from nuclear, the green hydrogen is from renewables. And what makes it so excellent, I'll repeat what I said earlier, is the fact that not only do solar panels are the best option, solar panels absorb heat. There are new solar panels being designed. They're called um, PVTs, uh, photovoltaic thermal at the back of the solar panel, because solar panels, once they get hot, they become, their, their efficiency drops enormously. So by putting a grid of, uh, or, or, or some sort of water cooling at the back, and there are different technologies being tested, we can bring down that, we can maintain that efficiency, but also we can use that water to hydrolyze, to, to hydrolyze it and produce hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is a commercial product for surgery, for industry, for very much the technology end. Uh, but the hydrogen is an energy storage. So it takes the, the, the renewable energy we produce with the solar panels, turns it into a fuel that can be moved around cars, that can be used in... in uh, power stations made up basically of fuel cell stacks. Now, the research at the moment is trying to find alternatives to platinum, which is the coating for the electrodes. Um, and they're moving forward with things like graphene. So the money needed is in parallel, as I say, for the R&D required to get around some of the last, um, the most recalcitrant of, of the technological problems like the fact that hydrogen and brittles metals so we have to find other materials graphene is a very good one to create hydrogen tanks because hydrogen has to be stored at high pressure i think it's 360 psi or more uh, or cryogenic um, conditions which means a lot of energy so the money is needed to get those technologies out there. Already, uh, as I said, that um, I will post that link again, hydrogenfuelnews.com. Uh, 
com is an excellent um, website to find out about the, the kind of things that are happening. But there's also Fuel Cell Works, uh, which will tell you about developments in fuel cells. But coming back to the credit union idea, because America doesn't have uh, banks like Triodos that could be persuaded to start launching things like that. I mean, Triodos Bank is not very far from where I am. They're in Bristol, here in, uh, in Britain. Um, and it would be possible to sort of persuade them because they, they fund all sorts of small industries and cottage industries and indigenous projects. Um, they could be persuaded to start um, perhaps looking at bonds, investment bonds, to get um, hydrogen production plants. Now, companies like, uh, I think it's Hyundai, but also uh, Toyota, have brought out um, hydrogen cars. And of course, Elon Musk has been poo-pooing it because he has invested in lithium. Lithium is one of the most destructive of the latest technologies we've come up with. It absolutely blights um, not just nature, but but <laughs> if lithium catches fire, you really don't want to be anywhere near it. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that there are opportunities as well as challenge, huge challenges. And one of the things that can get over this, this knot of people not wanting to be the first to move out of the bank is to make investment opportunities. Where people see investment starting to pay back, and when you start selling hydrogen, you will see that happening. California has the largest network of hydrogen refueling stations. This means that California could be the place to start, especially because it is water step stressed. This whole system can create, as I said, not just energy storage, but water purification and water storage. So it might be possible to, to get maybe a small group, a small study group to look at the opportunities to do a bit of research. Yeah, we uh, Thank you. We are, thanks, uh, yeah. Um, that's, and again, the floor is open to anyone that has to comment or I'm going to show something here on the screen, share with you, see what, uh, see if we can harmonize our, our interests and our goals and maybe share some ideas. Mm -hmm. at, at the moment, the, the, what we uh, selected after careful consideration, many years of study, is eight technologies, and the, the, those are the eight technologies right there on the screen. The, the reason for this is that these put together, they form a comprehensive, a com complete biocapacity, planetary biocapacity, and ecologically sustainable living lifestyle. Now these two, <laughs> These two are, are are critical, and just hold on, hold on a second, just a second in here because I have other things here on the screen I have to take care of. Just give me a second, mm -hmm. and just about okay. I think I'm done in there. Okay, looks good now, and uh, so these are uh wish this i could make the screen bigger but i have no control over that as well so maybe i can i can a little bit see if that works hold on bear with me yeah it's a little bit bigger so uh and the software in here puts me this thing here on the screen which i i wish they didn't but i also have no control over these uh, these bu extra bubbles in here so i'm gonna get off of this screen and go somewhere else number one is the design of solar passive homes this is technology that's been known at least four thousand years from northern africa from from greece uh, eve is is a greek american American Greek, he knows those things, just been here with us. 
and the Mediterranean and other parts. So this puts something on the board, on the play field, that is uh, homes that are built with materials that once the home is done with its service to humanity, to our homes, our families, children, grandchildren, the home falls back to, into the earth and does not uh, pile up like some of the pictures that Eve just showed us in huge amounts, like in Florida, like in northern uh, Holland that was a year ago, in northern Germany, in Hamburg, and other towns, that we end up with mountains and mountains and mountains of trash that does not biodegrade. It's We don't know what to, to do with it. It's an unrecyclable. In many cities around the world, they began, especially not notoriously in, in Europe, they started burning those things, which is a comp very complex chemical operation because of the amounts of toxics that they produce. They have been, they have to be, the, the, the burning has to be carefully, carefully monitored and still uh, nothing is perfect and there's still things uh, very, very, very dangerous toxins that go up in the air, and some of them are called furans and dioxins. In addition, passive solar design accomplishes a not so small feat, which is to make ohms that are thermally stable. And what that that, that means is they are not uh, too hot in the summer, and they are not too cool in the winter. And what that means also is that the result of that is that uh, they uh, require less extraneous outside energy like coal or, or electricity or gas or natural gas to warm them up or to cool them down. So thermally stable ohms, solar passive design, we know that, we know how to master these things today. And some many, many people around the world, we had several speakers in the, on this subject here already, and uh, all of these, we had already speakers on the, all of these, and they can be found on the eco-sustainable uh, neighborhoods. Eco-sustainable is critical to understand. Sustainable things are not ecological things. And ecological things are not sustainable as well. So the two have to conjugate. Speaking of one or the other, just one or the other separately, makes no sense. Makes no sense. So that, uh, that needs to, it's, it's the reason that we're talking about eco-sustainable architectures and the eco-sustainable engineering and eco-sustainable living lifestyles uh, instead of just talking about sustainable things. The other one is solar photovoltaic, like Ed, uh, uh, Eve before us mentioned, on the roof, not on the corporation, not on the, on, not on, on the grass field, not on the, the desert or, or cutting down f virgin forests. In our, our top of mountains, like he showed out that we'll, we'll start destroying those mountains and destroying the ecosystems. Because it will start erosion. Those foundations are massive, 800 tons of concrete and rebar and, and all of those things. So on, uh, on the rooftop, not on the corporation. There is a movement in California now. We, we started, started starting to bring the attention to that that the rooftops should be populated with solar panels. I don't see them. I walk every day and I go to a small hill next to my home. That's about 200, 300 feet, not much, over the, 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 the general uh, architecture of the, of the area. And it's roof after roof after roof after roof, empty. I see one solar panel in here, another, so in the, uh, another one in there, and this is in Southern California. We have 365, uh, uh, 65, 360 days of sun in here. 
Then next one is rainwater catch. And by the way, Eve has 4,000 kilowatt hour on his roof. He hasn't paid the bill in, in, in energy for, uh, I think, 10 years, maybe 15 years. So it, would be, it would be a good question for him. Then rainwater, we need to catch all of the rain. We saw Eve also showing what's going on in the climate, Lake Mead. Our reservoirs in California are below 20% capacity. And some of the reservoirs like Lake Mead and others in the southern part of California are hitting what's called the mud bottom. So that the, the, the water pumped from them are getting uh, out with silt and, and particulates and organic matter and all of that. And that becomes harder and harder to clean and put it on the pipes to the cities and whatnot. By the way, cities consume about 4% of the water available in the state. 15% is used by industry and commerce. And the other 80%, who consumes that? Well, Eve was talking about that. That's almonds and, and uh, um, uh, the, the agricultural industrial complex. So catch every single water drop that falls on the roof, put it on a, on a cistern. I crossed Australia from north to south, and 50% uh, of the population in Australia do this. And when I mentioned to them, well, we don't do that at home, uh, at home they, uh, they looked at me like if I was an alien from a different planet, which we are. Solar cooking, we had people talking about that, that can be built in the house structure like an appliance. You put the chicken in, you close the door at 6 a.m. in the morning or 7, 8 a.m., go to work, come back at home 4 or 5 in the, in the evening, 6, and the chicken is done, still warm, it's not overcooked, it's not uh, burned, because that creates some things called acryloamines that are in very, very, I think should, very carcinogenic uh, studies coming from Sweden in 2004. Those are, uh, the temperatures should not ex exceed under uh, 325 Fahrenheit, which they don't in these type of ovens. Appliances, just, just uh, easy to use as any modern appliance. Then so, solar domestic hot water on the roof for the shower, for bathing, for cleaning, for washing, for uh, clothes uh, washing and uh, whatnot in the house. And uh, also that they can also, it can also be used in, uh, in, in, other clim in colder climates in order to warm the house with the number one passive solar design. Uh, I've seen them in all over the world. I've seen them here to the south in Mexico, companies doing those for $500 for a family of four. Then we have 10 minutes to go, uh, wrap this up really quick. Then the, the water that's used in the house goes into the gray water system, which is more than a gray water system, is a gray water biomass system. This was actually designed from NASA in the 70s that was used to, um, uh, the, when the idea uh, to go to the stars, which is an impossible idea, it's absolutely impossible. Uh, from what uh, even those those trips to Mars are little, just to say the least, because of space radiation and people in Mars would have to live on under 10 feet of Earth, that's about 3 meters, 23 hours out of the day. Then uh, this biomass picks up the particles, start the detoxification of the house in here, uh, don't use, not using industrial soaps and, and uh, chlorine and, and, uh, and uh, industrial toxics for washing and for cleaning and whatnot. We see them by the hundreds in stores and supermarkets. Cut those out. So the water that comes from the house has biological particles that can be assimilated harmlessly by the, the roots of these, uh, the, the plants in here, like bulrushes and uh, cattails and 
every part of the planet has plants like those. Cut these at the time, put them in a compost pile, build soil, build humus. And then a compost toilet does essentially the same. We are biological agents. We are biological vets, walking vets, biological walking vets. And we discharge from time to time. And those can be composted. This is a Swedish design that has been used already since the 70s in Sweden. It's called the Clevis Multrum, which in Swedish translates to an inclined tank. Put those in the compost pile after a year or so of composting in here or directly into the soil. Build more humus and build more soil for an organic uh, garden number eight that produces fruits and vegetables. All of this goes back into the house. All of the water goes back in the house. It gets all of the energy to, to, that it needs. It cools and warms by itself. This is the cycle of life. This is the cycle of nature. This is an ecologically sustainable cycle. And this is, this is, these are the things that we recommend, advocate to do it first. And we need this as ecological, ecologically sustainable learning and education everywhere on the planet, in, in schools and universities. We also advocate for that. We have, uh, let's see how many minutes we have. Do we have minutes? No. I think we still are on about 20, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes on this second hour. And after that, uh, uh, yay, weekend for everybody. Uh, welcome, everybody. The floor is open. The microphone is open. I, um, I hope I didn't put you all to sleep. And... Um, open uh, one one comment on the hydrogen uh, 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 gear it's very resource intensive it's very very expensive the in terms of resources the hydrogen has major problems it's a very small molecule you you addressed very well about the the, the storage production at the moment 95 percent 95 percent of hydrogen comes from where well, natural gas and oil. The 5%, less than 5% comes from renewable energies, mainly from um, um, hydropower and the rest from wind or, or solar. Uh, it, that requires an enormous amount of infrastructure. Hydrogen is very difficult to move. It needs to be compressed to those pressures that you, you mentioned. That's 300 ATMs which translates to about 10,000 PSI. Very difficult to deal with those. That's an enormous amount of the percentage of energy that's imbued in hydrogen to be compressed and liquef liquefied or compressed. Uh, it's a great fuel, but it's not readily available. It needs to come from other fuels and other sources of energy. Then uh, in addition, to that, in order to be used, needs the the first aspect is of hydrogen is production. So we just spoke about that. The second is storage. Very complicated, very expensive because hydrogen is the smallest molecule that we know is one electron and one neutron, and those are uh, small enough to go through materials. And those materials that are impermeable to hydrogen are difficult. Stainless steel, layers of aluminum, and then all of that clad into composites, which uh, are carbon composites, which themselves take a lot of energy, a lot of energy to, to, um, to, to make those. Uh, I speak in this way because my master's was in hydrogen, uh, in hydrogen and my uh, doctorate was in composites. So the um, amount of energy to go and then the, to, to, to transport that, we don't have the infrastructure. We have the infrastructure for, for oil and gas, natural gas. The infrastructure to pump uh, hydrogen is extremely complex, extremely expensive. And in order to send it in pipelines from city to city, it's, it's uh, almost, uh, it's not, uh, it would ruin us literally, and make the situation on the planet even even more chaotic and more difficult. I know that Europe is pushing that, 
in my view, in my opinion, is uh, oligarch and uh, industrial propaganda, nothing, and, and ecocide and suicide. So in, um, in the, and the third aspect of hydrogen is that the, the, in order to be used, it needs fuel cells. And those use, you mentioned that, it uses the um, uh, rare earth metals that, uh, like platinum, most common, that are extreme, very rare, extremely rare, and we, don't, we simply don't have the quantities to, we are already having problems putting them in catalytic converters in cars, uh, and that would uh, compound the problem in the rise of uh, interests and wars and more wars and more conflict in order to get to countries that have those and, and take them out from there, basically for use in the West. In, the, in those 20 nations that use 80% of the resources. So this requires quite a bit of thinking. Uh, I invite everybody to, to think about these issues carefully uh, in, uh, in uh, use the science because the science is out there. Uh, I, uh, if I can help in some, in some way, I, I, I'm at your service and I put myself at your service. And uh, in addition to that, um, yeah, those fuel cells they don't last very long. They foul very, very quickly. Uh, the, many, the very few manufacturers that for transportation, uh, we have one is the, um, what's the name of that thing? It's built by Toyota and it starts with an M, I forgot. I don't know if they, they are sold anywhere else on the planet. Hyundai also started recently with another one, but I think the only the, it's the My Ray from 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 Toyota, and we built a few fueling stations, hydrogen stations, in in California. Uh, that was uh, previous governor Schwarzenegger. Uh, some uh, he started that the, the hydrogen highway between LA and um, and San Francisco, 400 miles which uh, which never has never been completed uh, the, and the my ray needs to replace the entire fuel cell which is about 40 fifty thousand dollars every 40 thousand fifty thousand miles so it's it's uh, very difficult very complex in chemistry in physics in materials in engineering problem uh, it might be uh, feasible at some time, like what you are, what you referred, electrolyzing water at, uh, at in small scale for the home, and uh, and uh, build small build small electrolyzers and fuel reversible fuel cells that can act both as, as electrolyzers and uh, and um, and fuel cells at the same time. So it's kind of a reversible fuel cell. It's what's called in the in in the science. Otherwise, uh, we uh, support first to do what we can do. Do the sensible things. This takes care of waste, reduces waste, reduce, reduce, uh, uh, not reduce, uh, eliminate waste, eliminate throwaway things, eliminate chemical, industrial pesticides, organic agriculture, of course, in here, orga organic uh, farming. A family of four can build a, a, a biomass generator like this one, um, two, by, two by five meters will, will serve the needs of a family of four. Reduce the human footprint, which is already on average on the planet, is uh, already at two planets. We are using two planets more uh, above the, the that the one planet that we have. So uh, we are uh, two hundred percent above the so-called what what is called the bio capacity of the planet. Well, if we go to the bank and ask uh, $200 and we have $100 in the bank, the bank uh, will tell us, will tell us uh, yeah, we can give you $100, but $200, um, we have to think about it. it. may turn you away. 
and uh, and or look at you and say you're a nice guy you're a nice person you know you're a nice very nice woman we know you we'll lend you the hundred dollars extra well the planet does not have a hundred dollars extra it does not have another planet extra so we are already in real time using twice what the planet can support that was the work revolutionary work of William Rees at University of British Columbia started in the early 50s, probably even earlier than that. He's been a professor in there since, he's still with us, and he has excellent lectures on YouTube. I recommend that you, you take a look at those. Um, it actually shows in numbers for the first time in human history, shows in numbers, puts a number on the waste and consumption cycle of the, uh, that we are inflicting on, on the planet. So uh, this anyone can do. We know all of these things. It's so open out there. There are no patents on this. There are no, the most complicated thing. There are no oligarchs dominating this. There are no corporations dominating this. All of this is known. Can be done with products off the shelf. And the most complicated and the most um, destructive being the the solar panels, and yeah, the next one the the um, for in a much 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 lesser degree, the ones here on number five on the on the solar domestic hot water. Uh, uh, some countries already adopted this. Very large uh, areas in France, I've seen quite a bit, and uh, solar domestic hot water. And one notorious uh, trip to Haifa in Jerusalem, as there are about 300,000 at the time, 300,000 on the roofs, and almost every single roof had those. Haifa, the, the previous, uh, the, the first capital of Israel. And uh, uh, on and on and on. So we are, now we are on the last 10 minutes. So this is a complete system. This is a complete lifestyle. No trash, no pesticides, no GMOs, no uh, this, this collecting the water reduces the infrastructure required for the water bringing into the home, reduces or eliminates that completely. Compost toilets elim eliminate and, and the gray water system eliminates completely the sewer systems, which are a nightmare a nightmare on the planet everywhere we are now we have now persistent chemicals in the oceans microplastics in the oceans uh, uh the, the toxins uh, it's, it's 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 by the thousands of components that in and, and bacteria and pharmaceuticals some 40,000 pharmaceuticals ending up in the water stream in the sewers and and all of that and then the biosolids that come from the sewers are placed in, 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 in plants and animals that end up in animals, end up in, in our bloodstream, and we can find them, we can see them. So this is a complete ecologically sustainable system. So let's do that first. That's our recommendation. And everything more exotic, trips to Mars, or, or uh, uh, they should come later. Should, should come uh, second place, in our opinion. This is the um, second hour, nine minutes less to go, and uh, the floor is open. Any comments? Any? Again, I hope I, I didn't put everybody to sleep. Uh, we still have um, Diana is still with us. Any com comments? Gia is still. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Gia. Robert is still with us. Yes, it's Jia. Jia, Jia. Okay, like Jia. Jia. The name of the earth. Jia. Oh, it, it has a meaning? It is, it's, it's the Greek name for it's Gaia or Jia. Oh, Gaia or Jia. So the okay. two. Oh, oh that's the cool. Hence, geology. That's brilliant. Geography. That's, and so on. So you're the voice of the so earth. Gaia Vox, Jia Vox means well, the voice of the earth. That's why I chose it as a as a nom de guerre for um, environmental and climate campaigning. Awesome. Because uh, I don't want to speak from my interest, but 
Gaia's or Jaya's. And uh, um, yeah, what I absolutely subscribe to everything you've just uh, presented. Um, I left home before I turned 15 to become a hippie, lived in hippie communes, and some of them were already using some of those techniques. Yes, yes, that's, um, right. that's exactly right. You know, this is all, it's all technology and absolutely prime. The problem is we have these huge cities and they're not going to go that way. And so in Italy we say if you want to break a barrel, you need to deliver one blow to the wood and one blow to the ring, alternating. That's exactly so it isn't like going the... to be one solution. It's going to be um, a matter. I mean, at the moment, when I was talking about hydrogen, well, I forgot to say that there's a lot of research in algal production of hydrogen. Um, in, but uh, in, it's, you, one, you, it's the can, intermediate Can you repeat that technology. again? Because I, it, it didn't come. A lot of research in what area? Not interrupting you. Oh, sorry. It's uh, production of hydrogen by algae. Oh, by algae. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm sorry, like... I pronounce it the, the Italian algae. Latin okay. way. Okay. Apologies. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so continue. algae. Um, so yes, the the what you present is one of the the uh, the two sides. What must be in the be between them is moving our money because. The system will not react until we put it with its back against the wall. Um, there's a famous image that I, I'd love to share, but I don't know how, um, of a big fish being chased by lots of little fishes, like the piranhas. And that's what we need to kind of look at and maybe promote, is tell people, you do have power, your money has power. So if we can move our money out of the banking system that's running at the present, move it into credit unions, move it into ethical banks, or even create our own, that's the only thing that will yeah, motivate. I agree. agree. We have five minutes. Uh, Diana says, essentials for humans and life on Earth to survive are clean water, clean air that is within uh, habitable uh, atmospheric zones, ecosystems to sustain life, including those that produce soil. It's right on the mm -hmm. money. And uh, Robert says expenditures, including human lives, by the millions are of no consequence compared to the prioritized expenses that are in intended to help wealthy owners. And I'm having a little bit of time of scrolling up and down in here. So uh, to, to accumulate even more wealth, an intact, intact ecosystem in really, is really much more valuable than any value that can be extracted from here. That's, that's on the money. Um, then what else? Thanks, Diana. In just for the, for the flowers, in just a few short months, over 100 billion was diverted to, towards supplying arms and expense to be busy about blowing up uh, with the Ukraine. <laughs> with the Ukraine, this does not include the expense coming from Russia, of course. Yeah, that's 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 uh, all of this is cataclysmic, uh, and uh, there is also an, an, a notice here. By the way, I'm going. I'm copying the the chat box. And if I have your email, I'll send I'll send it to everybody as usual. Put it in the email. Also, the link for today's uh, podcast will be available on uh, on you on on Facebook on Facebook in just a few minutes. And uh, after we close, we have a few more minutes to go. Let's see, four minutes more to go. Final thoughts, uh, um, uh, Robert. Put a link to William Rees Rees in uh, his his work. It's it's uh, one of the I think it's one of the you should you should have had already a Nobel Prize on this. It's one of the most seminal, most fundamental studies ever to be done in uh, it that places us squarely in the middle of nature and the resources of the planet, and and how we fit in. And at uh, at the moment we are we are an anomaly and and an, an enormously enormously expensive uh, in terms of resources 
um, black hole in the, on the planet. That's uh, that's where we are. Three minutes. Uh, start saying goodbyes, final thoughts. Uh, unmute your microphone, if, and um, we'll be back here next week. Still, will be the nineteenth, so it's before before uh, Christmas. I'm planning to do a ad lib. Uh, on uh, uh, the 24th, Christmas, uh, organic Christmas, just to make uh, just make sure that the turkey is organic or whatever, the potatoes, sweet potatoes, cranberries, everything is organic. And then we'll make an organic, uh, a uh, eco-sustainable new year as a, uh, as a uh, memory, as a remembrance, as a uh, reminder that uh, for all of the resolutions that are made in the new year, so make it eco-sustainable this year. See if, see if that sticks. Um, Robert, I wanted to wish yes? you all a happy solstice because um, long before Christmas, winter solstice was the mo moment when we turned from the dark to the light Ten seconds. and may this year be the beginning of the light. Ten seconds. Bye bye, everyone. Say uh, we'll see you next week. Was nineteenth we have, and we are booked through until the end of uh, January, and more to come. We'll continue until uh, until uh, we can for as long as we can. Fantastic. Lord willing. Fantastic. So happy. By the way, we'll have uh, longer longer days in just a few for the, the ones on the northern hemisphere in just a few yeah. weeks more, a week or two more. So that's good news. And uh, keep yes. safe. Less than a minute, 10 seconds. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Be well now. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye Roxy. Bye, Diana. Bye, Robert. Bye, everyone that was in here. Bye, everyone that's uh, listening on, uh, on fa following on Facebook. Bye for now. Happy New Year. And, have, and, and for everyone on um, Facebook, thanks for following us. Please share. The podcast will be available right there on, on the same screen as soon as uh, it ends. And please share. Please invite others. Please attend. This should go viral, in my opinion. We should get serious and look at the, the solutions presented here. And uh, they are available to uh, to anyone, and uh, we should roll up our sleeves and and start working on these things. Bye for now. Merry Christmas, and hope to see you here uh, during Christmas on the our organic uh, Christmas ad lib. Uh, that's uh, open mics. We we'll talk about about as much as we can about these things, as much as anyone wants, and then. Following that, on the um, um, New Year's Eve falls on the 31st. Uh, I don't know yet if I can broadcast any um, any music. I'm working on that, trying to find uh, music that uh, neither uh, Facebook or Facebook or uh, the other platforms don't uh, don't block because uh, it's been uh, it's been they have been quite. Um, ferocious on that they block everything that has a copyright on it so we'll try to find them there's several groups that i'm contacting if you have ideas about that suggestions please um, pm or email us and um, otherwise uh, happy new year and bye for now